Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Some people are still coming in from the waiting room, and that is okay. We are here to make some really cool jewelry today. We are making sky and cloud jewelry with UV resin crafts. So this little bottle of magic starts out as a liquid, and then as you expose it to UV light, it turns into a hard plastic. And so this opens up a whole world of crafting possibilities for you, especially in jewelry. So the, the pieces that we're making today, I'm gonna to show you three different ways of making clouds and sky effects with different, some of them with some interesting household materials. So I hope some of you are crafting along with us. Um, let me start, um, let's go um, switch this to the top-down camera. And these are the pieces that we're gonna make today. These earrings and these earrings both come from a mold. And this earring comes, uh, sorry, this is a necklace. This comes from a bezel. So we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about both techniques, but we're gonna start with molds and I'm gonna walk you through several different techniques for making those clouds. But let me give you a close up view of this earring. So you can see that it's actually two parts that are connected with a jump ring. You have your arch here with the clouds and a little topper piece that's connected with jump rings to an, um, an ear wire. This one's simple. It just has the jump ring and the ear wire at the top, but it's got that beautiful sunset ombre, which I will show you how to do. Okay, so let's talk about my supplies that I have. Let me get rid of these pieces. And what I have here, is a silicone mat. This blue, this is my desk, and this blue is a silicone mat. And this protects your work surface um, and it helps you just to not get stuff everywhere. Hang on just a sec, I have to click a button here. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so that is silicone mat. This is the extra large size. We also have this smaller size, which has been well loved. Uh, um, so both are available. Next, I have um, the star of the show, the uh, UV resin lamp. So everything that I'm showing you is sold at Michael's. This lamp, when I hit the button, see how the lights turn on? This is a nine watt UV lamp. And this is what is gonna harden your resin in just a few minutes. It takes maybe two to three minutes to harden that into plastic. I also have a number of these silicone mixing bowls. They're flexible also made of silicone, you'll see a trend here, because resin does not stick to silicone. Um, let's see, I have some wood sticks. Um, I have some tints, so we're going to be using these different tints to make those colors. I have my molds, also silicone molds. So we're going to be using, here's our art shape, and then I'm also going to be using this bar shape. You can use whatever shape you want. Any of these shapes will work beautifully as clouds, but you'll notice this is um, very clear silicone. There are a lot of silicone molds out there that are opaque. There are candy molds, soap molds. When you are using UV resin, you want to make sure you're using a clear mold. That makes sure that that UV light can penetrate throughout the entire piece and um, it will cure all the way. So those are our molds that we're using. Then I have assorted findings um, and some bezels. Here's that bezel. This is just a frame that we're gonna fill with resin. And then of course we have our bottle of resin. So if you've used resin before, um, you may have used two part resin. That's where you have um, two different liquids that you mix together very carefully and you stir um, there's none of that with this UV resin. This is, this is uh, pouring out of the bottle, ready to go. No mixing needed unless you're mixing in some fun stuff, some glitter, some tints in there. Um, so those are the main components. Um, I also have some jewelry tools to the side. I'll need those when I start working with the jump rings. Um, so just a note of safety, you want to make sure you're not working near an open window where you have UV rays just pouring in all the time that will harden the resin before you want it to. 
All right, so we're going to start by mixing up some colors here. And um, I'm going to start actually just by mixing the blue and the white. So again, I have my resin. This little cap part comes off, and it, here's your nozzle. And so I'm going to mix just a little bit. Oh, well, it would help if I, this is a brand new bottle, so you have to remove the seal first. That would help to get things started. So um, I know that there are maybe a lot of first time uh, jewelry makers in the bunch. There might be a lot of first time resin crafters. Feel free to ask any questions you want in the chat. We have some folks at our main office um, that will be helping me answer your questions. If I see your questions, I'll try to answer them live on air. Um, but yes, if you have any questions at all about what we're doing, just let us know. All right, so in this first cup, I'm putting just a little bit, I'm gonna tint that white. This next cup, I'm gonna put a little bit more, I'm gonna tint that blue. And so now let's go in with our tints. This is what they look like. They are very, very concentrated. Um, so you wanna give them a really good shake. And if this is your first time opening up the package, you'll have to open up your tint and cut that tip off but this is the blue. The blue especially is very, very concentrated. So I'm trying to achieve this kind of very light blue color. Everything is blue, so it's hard to see what color that is, but if I put it on top of here, you can see it's very light blue. So I need a whisper of this tint in there. This little bottle will last you forever. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put a little drop of tint to the side of my silicone cup. And that way I can use my stick and just kind of grab a little bit at a time and pull that into the mix and see if that's the color that I want. And then I can pull more in. But you can see, actually let's bring this white paper in here so you can see on white, what's happening. There, you can see that a little bit better. So I'm trying to achieve a light translucent blue. It can be as dark as you want it to be. Um, you may also want to put another, again, a whisper of yellow in here, and that way you get a little bit more of an aqua. Actually, I'm gonna mix this whole bunch in here just so that you guys can see the color a little better on camera. And then I always keep a paper towel off to the side. This is just so that I can wipe off my stick in between mixes. I am gonna add just a tiny little bit of yellow. Let's see, I'm gonna put this little dot up there because I like that kind of aqua blue sky. But this is optional. All right, again, going into the yellow and just the tiniest bit. See, I, I think actually that was a little much, but let's see. Oh, it's pretty. It's kind of a pretty turquoise. I like it. Okay, there's a question from Ava. Thank you for putting your question in the chat. She asked, what am I using to tint? And these are special resin tints sold at Michael's. You can see they say UV Resin Craft. We have um, six different colors available at Michael's. And this is a special tint that's made for tinting resin. Um, you, there are a lot of ways to tint resin. You can use um, a tiny little drop of acrylic paint. You can use colored glitters, which can impart some color to it. Um, you can use mica powders. Um, a lot of different things. We just don't suggest to use alcohol inks because they do interfere with the cure. All right, so we have our beautiful blue all mixed up. Now I'm gonna go in with the white. And I don't wanna make this a completely opaque white. I'm gonna add two good drops in there. And the reason I don't want it super opaque is so again, I don't wanna interfere with the cure. So this is white, but you can see there's a little translucency still to it. I'm gonna add just a pinch more white. One more drop. 
but you can see the difference in how much blue I added versus how much white. They do, as you work with these tints, you'll get a feel for kind of how much you should add. And then just wiping that off. All right, and this is what I need for my first step here. Let me bring in my mold. Now, actually, I'm gonna move this white paper so that you can see what I'm doing. And as I said, I'm gonna show you three different ways of making clouds. So what I'm gonna do is within one earring, I'm gonna do three different materials of making clouds. You're just gonna choose one because you're not a crazy person like I am. I wanna show you all different ways of making clouds. Um, and the first way is just to go in with your white tinted resin. And um, this is how I started making clouds. So I'm kind of walking you through my process of learning about making clouds. Um, when I started, I thought, well, let's just mix up some white tint and then just make some dots inside of our mold that are roughly cloud shaped. And so what is a cloud shape? Well, it's usually flat on the bottom and it's usually fluffy. See how I'm like pulling this up? keeping a flat bottom. The difficulty with using straight tint for your clouds is it's difficult to control the shape of the cloud. So I'm just gonna do those two clouds. But I wanna still show you in case you can use this. Now, I'm gonna lock those in place by bringing the UV light. The first thing I do is move up my mixed mix resin off to the side and try to like shield that from the UV rays. So here is my first type of cloud that I'm showing you and I'm trying to see how it wants to move and shift around. I'm trying to achieve a flat bottom and a sort of fluffiness. And now I'm gonna put the light on it. Now, when you are making something in a mold, you're going to have a good side and a bad side. The good side is down inside the mold. So this piece, this side down here is going to be your front. So when it comes out of the mold, you're going to flip it around. That's your front. Um, also, you will notice that each of the shapes, especially in this mold, have this little silicone peg. That peg is what gives you a hole at the top of your shape in order to connect it to anything to connect it to any type of finding using a jump ring. Okay. Um, so this UV light has been going for less than a minute. Once it hits a minute, it will turn off automatically. So it's got a built-in timer. And since this is kind of like a pre-cure, I'm only going to run it for about a minute. And that is going to harden those clouds to the level that, that I can start adding more. Okay, so here are my clouds. Now you can see if I move this gently, you can see that those are no longer liquid. Those are now um, solid. So that is method one of making clouds. Let me show you method two. All right, method two uses next what I tried, which was a little bit of a cotton ball. If you don't have a cotton ball, you can just grab the cotton from the top of a Q-tip, for example. And what I'm doing is in a little silicone cup, I'm just gonna be tearing pieces of this cotton and putting that down in there. Okay. And then adding some UV resin, just a little bit. And we are gonna saturate the cotton in the UV resin. And um, the reason that I kept looking for a better method other than this is because when the resin touches the cotton, it makes it a little bit transparent. So you lose some of that fluffiness of the cotton. Okay, so here I am kind of pulling it apart, placing it into the mold, and you can kind of mold that into a cloud shape. And again, I'm trying to achieve some flat bottoms 
and some fluffiness happening at the top. Okay. And so also just like we locked down this one, I'm gonna lock those down by putting it under the light. So anytime you are curing with um, the light, keep in mind, layers are your friend. Layers work so wonderfully with UV resin um, because thin layers are gonna cure a lot more easily. If you have a really thick layer that's opaque, you can imagine that the resin that's at the bottom of that layer is just like the, the UV rays are not penetrating all the way. So doing things in layers, that's the way to go. All right, so that is gonna go for a minute. We're gonna pretend that it went for a minute and show you what I have. Even in just that well, 15 seconds, this is hardened already. So that's method two of making clouds. And now method three is my favorite. I have to say, once I found this method, uh, I don't make clouds any other way, but I wanted you to have options. And so that method is just with white bar soap. So uh, grab some white bar soap and a microwave safe dish and just slice some soap into the dish like so. Just kind of carving off some tiny, you need a tiny bit, unless you are making like 50 pairs of earrings, you just need a tiny bit. And then you wanna, I keep bumping my camera here, sorry guys. You want to put this in the microwave for, oh gosh, maybe seven to 10 seconds is all you need. And it, something about whatever's in the soap, it fluffs up in the microwave. So here, let me pull this little piece of soap out. Here's a piece of soap. You can see this is the smooth from when I use the knife. And then here in the microwave, part of it started getting kind of like fluffy and cloud-like. Well, that's what you want. And so once you have that fluffiness, you can just kind of like break these up and you have perfect clouds that are ready to go into resin. So let me show you how to do that. So for this method, you wanna put a little bit. Um, we have a question. How many seconds did I say in the microwave? I said, I think seven to 10 seconds. So for this method, you wanna put a little bit of resin down into the mold first. And then wet the tip of your stick with a little bit of resin. That makes it easy to pick up from inside your cup. In fact, I can dump some out. Let me dump. Ooh. That makes it easy for me to pick up a little bit of soap. And look at that, perfect, tiny, little fluffy cloud. You can see when I bring this back, you can see the three different effects. See this cloud, which we made with the tints, it's great, it's bright white, but you have a hard time controlling the edges and getting the fluffiness. This looks cool, it looks more fluffy, but it has a little bit more transparency to it. And they're kind of bigger pieces. These little soap pieces, they just take on, you know, a nice organic uh, cloud look kind of on their own. Um, and you can get small pieces like this. See how small these little clouds are? I'll even put in like a tiny little cloud piece right here. And these, as I build this, I'll talk to you about how to make it look like more realistic clouds. Um, So let me show you, you want to vary the size of the soap particles that you're putting in there. That's going to add to the realism. So you can see I have tiny little, there's kind of a, I have tiny little soap pieces and kind of bigger soap pieces. And that helps with the realism. Let's look back at our piece here. So you can see I've got bigger pieces and small, it just makes it look like those kind of sunset clouds that you see at night. Compare that to this. Now this piece we also made, we were figuring out this process, but see how all of the clouds are about the same size? Um, it looks less realistic. So definitely vary the size of your clouds and that will just help with the realism. Okay. 
All right, so now I'm, this piece was to show you all three. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this other arch with more soap, um, partly because I want you to see how fast it is for you to do this. Kind of mushing these pieces down to create my clouds. Again, going in with the stick, picking up a cloud shape, you don't have to be so precious about it. Just get them in there. Vaguely, if you can, achieve a flat bottom. That is helpful. But look how fast this goes. This one's kind of turning on me. I might kind of cut that. Always adding in some smaller, smaller pieces to be the little stringy clouds that you see. And I just, I kind of scrape the wood stick against the side of the mold to let those release. Okay, and that's, that's all there is to it. Oops, like that. All right, so let's lock all of this down and then I'll, we're gonna add the blue onto the back of it. So, so far we've just added the clouds in a clear layer. So while that's going, let me show you. Here's our example earring. You can see, oh, let me bring in that white paper again. You can see if I hold it to the side that the top layer is clear. And that's what contains all of the clouds. And then the bottom layer is blue. So I say top and bottom because that is what the finished earring is. When you're putting it in the mold, you're first putting in the top layer and then you'll finish with the back layer. I hope that makes sense. Um, so I still have off to the side, my pre-mixed white and my pre-mixed blue. I also need to make with that pre-mixed white, um, the little topper here that I totally forgot about. So let me take this out and add in with my white resin, these little circles. These circles are your earring toppers. You do not need them to create an earring, but they make, make it look just a little more finished. So you notice I'm not filling the mold up the whole way. I don't really want to fill up a mold with opaque white. It will take a long time to cure. I'm just filling the mold maybe about halfway and I'm gonna fill the rest of it with clear. All right, and this can go back under the lamp. And while that is going, let's talk about cure times. So as I said earlier, this really works wonderfully to cure your resin within just a few minutes. If you're working with perfectly clear resin, maybe with just a few little um, glitter flakes in it, you probably only need about two to three minutes to cure the resin. If you are using heavy tints, opaque things, anything that is going to block the light, you're gonna need more than that, maybe four minutes, five minutes under the lamp. Now, the cool thing about UV resin is it also cures in the sunlight. So on a sunny day, you can put this outside and within about 15 minutes or so, you will have a fully hardened um, piece of resin. So um, what is actually happening under here as this cures is a chemical reaction is taking place and um, it is hardening that resin. And one of the byproducts of it is heat. So when I touch this mold that has just come out from under that lamp, it feels a little warm. Um, so you do wanna make sure that that cools before you take your pieces out of the mold. Um, and the reason that for that is when it's warm, it has a little bit of bendability to it. Um, um, let's see here. Steph, it looks, oh, there we go. Sorry about that. I lost you for a minute and now, let's see. 
Nope, that's my ceiling fan. Uh, let's see if I can get this back in the right way. Hang on with me, guys. There we go. Okay. We're back. Okay, so this has been under there for a few minutes. Oh, is this, sorry, is this Scott, is this landscape or is it's this portrait showing right the right now. way? Sorry, it's say portrait. that again. If you can get it to be um, landscape, that would be better. If not, it's not terrible. Let's do this. It does not want to come back to the right way here. Let's see. Okay. A little more. Tilt it a little more. Yeah, it doesn't want to come back to the right way. So let me just try to put the phone like this. That works. Is that better? Okay. Sorry about that. It's okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Sure. Okay. So let's see what we have here. So as I said, this will heat up. It is now cooled. I can add the rest of my um, clear resin to fill these end pieces up to the top. And again, as I said earlier, clearing in layers. I mean, curing in layers, especially when you're using opaque. All right. Um, so speaking of layers, we're ready to put down some blue. So here's our blue. So I'm going to flood this side with blue. Oh, and I just realized that I went right over my yellow that was in the nozzle here. That's okay. So I'm going to fill this with blue and fill this with blue. And then going in with my stick, just to kind of move that resin around. Keep in mind what you're looking at here is the back. Let's fill this up. And <laughs> I got some yellow tint in here. So let's just pretend that I didn't do that. You, of course, would never do that at home. <laughs> All right, and you do want to make sure that's filled to the top. So I have two very non-matching earrings here, but this is just to show you guys the different techniques. All right, fill it to the top, put it back under the lamp. Um, so while we're doing that, I wanted to do just a little bit of show and tell and show you some other pieces that we've made using very, very similar techniques. So here, for example, is a um, hoop earring, beautiful pair of hoop earrings, using this same technique of kind of burying something inside there. Instead of soap, these are dried pressed flowers. This was made in one of our hoop molds. Um, Here's a different hoop. This one just has some different glitter flakes in it. Let's see what else we have. Um, this is a ring made with our cocktail ring mold. So same exact techniques. It's a mold. It's clear resin and it's something that you put inside the resin. These are little sort of like um, branches, flower branches that are dried. All right, so that went for a minute. It turned the light off. I'm gonna put it on for just a little bit more. Here's another ring. This has some little um, metal charms and pearls inside of it for kind of like an ocean ring. Is another super cute ring. So first we made the swirly gray part and then we added this piece, which is another molded piece to the front of it. And we adhered them together by using more resin. Resin is also a great adhesive.
Here's another piece that I made. This is with mica powder, which is a very finely milled. It's like if you took glitter and finely milled it, you get these like kind of iridescent, um, really pretty colors. This is like a gem shape. Okay, so that's gone for two minutes. Let me show you what we have here. Now it's still a little bit warm. These pieces aren't warm, so let me pop those out. So de to demold it, just kind of pop out from the back and that's how easy it comes out, just perfectly. You can see that that hole is, um, um, go goes all the way through and is a very clean, mold. Pop this one out too. Now, if you have a little bit of residual stickiness on here, that is normal. You can take those pieces, put them back under the lamp, and that should get rid of the stickiness. If you're having a problem with stickiness, you might also want to consider as a final step, putting them on a sunny windowsill for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, a question from Stephanie, nice name. Um, she said, can you put basically anything into a mold for decoration? Um, the answer is yes. Uh, we have, we've put candies, we've put paper, stickers, metal, plastic, glass, um, almost any material you can think of will work inside the resin as a decoration. Okay, so here are earring toppers. We bring in our example earring. You'll see that it has two holes. So um, where you, wherever you need a, um, an attachment hole and don't have one, you can use a little drill like this. This is also sold in the same section at Michael's where the, where the resin is sold. And this is a simple little twisting drill. So you put the end of it inside your hand like this. And um, let me just show you how that works. So you figure out where your hole is going to be and adding some pressure and twisting so the end of it is inside my hand and I'm twisting and that will bore out a perfectly sized hole um, to attach this. So let's do that. Sort of little by little gently boring out a hole. This hole, I believe, is 1.5 mm. We also sell different tips for this drill um, that are different sizes. I think it goes up to maybe uh, 3 mm. So you can see that has pierced all the way through and create another hole. Let's move these off to the side and let's demold this. So on this side, we have our clouds that we made from soap only. These are our soap clouds. Pretty convincing. They, get, they have that fluffiness that is hard to achieve in other methods. This one is the one I accidentally got some yellow tint in, but this is shows the different kinds. Here's our uh, tint clouds. That's what we started with. You can see they look, I don't know, kind of cartoonish, but they are very bright. Here are our cotton clouds. You can see that they almost disappear. That's what is frustrating about the cotton. And then here's our little bit of soap clouds that we did. So you can see the difference, different effects that you can achieve. All right, so we're ready to put an earring together. So we have our top, our bottom. We need a couple jump rings. And an ear hook. All right, you want some tools to be able to work with these jump rings. Um, so they're very large jump rings. Um, it just makes it easier. You wanna find the break in the jump ring, which is at the top, bring one toward you, one away from you, and then thread that through your arch, also threading through the little top 
white disc and just straighten that out in the opposite direction to close it. All right, and now those two are joined. And now same thing, another jump ring. Let's open that up. When jump rings are big enough, you can just open one side of it with your fingers. Here you go. Use that to connect your ear wire and then close it. And here we have made a beautiful earring. Here's our example earring. There we go. Project one, done. Cool, all right, let's move on to the sunset clouds because we are running out of time and I wanna make sure that you guys see this. Okay, here we need three colors. I'm gonna raise this up a little bit. Okay, so the three colors are just a tiny bit. Sorry, this cup is a little dirty. Let me wipe that out. Okay, little bit of each color needed. Pink, orange, and yellow. All right, shaking each one. I'm gonna put one drop at each. There's our pink. And then yellow in both. All right, and the first one I'm gonna mix is this orange by taking a tiny little bit of this pink and working it into the orange. Oh, you can't see that. And you just want to stir that until you get the right orange color that you want. And I'm just keep dipping over here and stealing from this one. Okay. And there's our pink. And then I'm wiping my stick off in between and gonna stir up this yellow. All right, putting a little bit of this on actually this piece of paper. If you have a little scrap piece of paper to the side, that's also another way of controlling how much tint. So I wanted to add a little more pink to this Make that a little bold and a little more pink to our orange. Maybe just a touch more. So I really want to see the difference between the orange and the yellow. Okay, there are three colors. Let's put them here. And for this, we are going to use this rectangle shape. This is a great earring mold. Um, so you can see that it comes with two of each shape. And um, I want to, these mixed colors, I'm going to put off to the side because I want to start with my clouds. So, which means clear layer goes down. Let me get more of my soap concoction here. Let's see. Here's just one piece of soap. I'm gonna kind of crush it. There we go. And let's put some clouds in here. 
Um, this is probably hard for you to see. So let's try to make it easier for you to see. There we go. And I kind of like it when the clouds um, like kind of break apart a little bit. So when I place them, I can kind of place it with a little bit of like pushing it down in there. And that just adds to that natural look. I can take two pieces and put them together like I just did to get kind of a fluffiness. But you can see how fast this goes. And some more little bits and pieces up here in this corner. And then you just want to take a look, see where you have any holes. I feel like I was missing something in this little corner here. Maybe move these around slightly. All right, that's it. All right, so let's move this off to the side and lock that into place. So you always want to, when you're working in layers, lock that first layer into place because, you know, I took time to place all of those little clouds there. If I dump my sunset colored tints on top, it's just gonna disperse everything. We don't want that to happen. All right. Um, also, and I didn't talk about this, but in a sunset, it's fun to add. In fact, this one does. I don't know if you can. Oh, I keep bumping that. If you can see, I've added just a tiny little smidgen of glitter. And this kind of like white AB glitter is the perfect for adding to that. So I think that I'm going to add just a little pinch of glitter into my tinted colors just because why not all right so this is gone for a minute let me bring my colors in here and let's just sparkle them up we want just a little bit in each and this is just your personal choice if you Love glitter like I do, you want it in everything. And just stir that up. Okay, let's bring you guys up a little bit here. All right, pink, pink is gonna go in first. So I want to focus that right up the top where that little um, silicone peg is. And then um, I'm actually gonna do the yellow, which is at the bottom next. And I'll save the transition color, which is our orange for the middle. All right, let's add some of this orange. All right, and then you want to go in with your stick and just kind of encourage it to transition gently into the next color. So I'm kind of putting in there, I'm doing little swirlies.
and just making sure that it's filled to the top and that those colors are placed exactly where I want them. Okay, so this is what I have. Let me bring it up closer. And um, let's bring in our light. And as that's curing, I'm gonna give you guys some tips on cleanup. So here's what I have left in my cup. The easiest way to clean this up is just to put it near your light as you're curing. I'm gonna put all of my little bits that are left in the cup near the light while that's curing. Um, so that way what I can do is just pop it right out of that silicone cup and throw it in the trash. Um, a lot easier than scooping it out when it's still liquid because you can just pop it out. You do not have to throw those little bits into the trash though. What you can do is hang on to them and then use them as inclusions in future resin pieces. And we have done that here. I'm gonna show you an example of that. So we had a bunch of leftover Oh, that's not it. Wait. Oh, uh, here we go. We had a bunch of leftover resin. And then we just chopped those pieces up and put them down inside a mold. And you get an effect. It's something like this. Of little chunks of color inside. So that's a cool way to use up your resin leftovers. So this went for one minute. I turned it on for another minute. Um, but you can see this cup now has been sitting there for about a minute. I can just pop this out and toss that or cut it up, like I said, and use it. But it leaves it pretty clear. If you have any bits of glitter, um, or just anything stuck to the bottom of that, the best way to remove it is with some tape just some scotch tape, go in there and it'll lift up whatever glitter is left inside there. Okay, so this has gone for almost two minutes here. We also clean up here. This one's not quite done because it wasn't fully under the light. So let me put those to the side. And here are my pieces. Now these are still warm. And especially with a long kind of a straight piece like this, I really don't wanna pop it, pop it out while it's warm because it will bend. And I don't want these to bend. I want them to be nice and straight, but you can see they are ready to go. So let's wait for those to cool for just a minute. And then here's our example. We're gonna need a jump ring and we are gonna need another ear wire. Okay, so these are cooling down, but you can see how easily that just pops out of there. There we go. All right, so let's get in there with these jump rings to connect everything together. Open the jump ring, attach two things together, close the jump ring. And there you go, little sunset earrings. Love these. Okay, we have about 10 minutes left. And so in those 10 minutes, I want to, we've talked about molds extensively, but another important way of working with UV resin is in bezels. So the same techniques that we just did, but I'm gonna show you how to get it with this metal frame around it. So that is called a bezel. We have a lot of different bezels available in the stores, a lot of different shapes. This one happens to be an upside down triangle. So I'm gonna show you how to work with bezels too, if you decide that you want a metal frame around your piece. So when working with bezels, you need this product. This is a tape, a special resin tape. It's actually made of polyester. 
and it um, is what allows you to build inside that charm, the bezel, without everything just splooshing out everywhere. So I'm gonna cut a piece of tape. And then take my bezel on the sticky side of the tape and just press it down. And that tape being there is what is going to stop the resin from dripping out underneath it. Okay, so in the same way that we just did, we are gonna add a little bottom layer of clear and the difference between using a mold and a bezel, there's, there's a few differences. The first one being that what you see while you're building this bezel is the top. Whereas in the mold, the top is at the bottom. All right, so I just made kind of like a, like a first layer in there of clear. I don't wanna cure that. So when you're working with bezels, this is the process that you do, no matter what you're gonna put in that bezel, you add the tape and then you add a clear layer on top of the tape that only goes up maybe a third of the side of the bezel. And this is just how you start the project. This is to get a clean blank slate to work on. And I'm pre-curing that under the light for a little less than a minute. And just because we, I think we, we know how to work with um, clouds, I'm going to put a little flower inside this one just to show you how easy it is to work with dried flowers. So we also sell a full range of dried and preserved flowers at Michael's. Some of them are flat like these ones are. Some of them still have a little bit of dimension to them, but they work so beautifully inside bezels. All right, so let's add just a little more resin in there. We pick up this flower and put him in there. And you wanna be very gentle. These flowers are very fragile, but I'm just kind of setting it down into the resin. And um, let's add a little bit of greenery. And adding just a little piece of green here. All right. And a little bit of resin on top. We'll fill this to the top. And then go in with your wood stick. Just make sure that that resin has flowed to all of the corners. And once you're satisfied, lock it down. Um, okay. So we are wrapping it up here. If you have any questions, um, now is the time to ask. Um, they're coming in quick. I'm gonna try to read. Uh, I missed some of the last questions. So Jen, if you're there, uh, I saw some questions come through, but they, they scrolled through quicker than I could read them. Uh, yes, I'm here. So the one question is how long does the resin last and how long can you make it with one bottle? Okay, so um, we have several different size bottles. This bottle that I'm working with is the 60 milliliter. We have a 25 and the big mama size, which is 200. Um, the, 
this it's actually a lot of resin because when you're using it to make jewelry you're only using a tiny little bit of it so you could imagine the amount of resin that we used in this piece is oh gosh in teaspoons less than definitely less than a teaspoon maybe a half of a teaspoon so you get quite a quite a lot and i'm going to put this through again you get quite a, a lot per bottle because the pieces are so small but of course it depends on what you're making and how big those molds are or how big those bezels are so it's difficult to say exactly how many pieces that you would get from this um but it's more than you think All right, so this went for one minute. I put it under for another minute just to make sure that it was um, fully cured. Now, again, we're using just clear resin here. Um, a question from Veronica, is it safe to breathe it? Um, it has been tested for a lot of different things. Um, you wanna make sure that it, it, uh, if you have a sensitivity to resin, that you're using gloves but um, it has not been tested as a hazard for, um, or it hasn't been, uh, ne had a negative test as a hazard for breathing in, but you do want to work in a well-ventilated area. Okay, so here's what we have, our little quick dried flower, and so you just remove it from the back of the tape, and that is how you use dried flowers with bezels. And so I can add this to an earring. I can add a little bit of chain to make it, um, make it a necklace. And in this case, the chain can just pop right through it. I don't even need to use a jump ring on that side. And that's how you use dried flowers. Okay, um, a question from Lori. Um, Jen, if you can reach out to Lori on her question. All right, so let's bring in all the things, the lovely things that we made. So here we go. Here's our sunset. Here is our blue sky. Here are all the failure ways of making clouds. <laughs> here we go. All right, so if you enjoyed today's class and you are going to be creating UV resin things on your own, we would love to see what you're making. So do post your creations on social media with hashtag UV resin craft. You can connect with our company at bluemoonstudio.co on Facebook and Instagram. And you can connect with me on Instagram at Stephanie Menor Creates. A um, recording of this class will be posted to Michael's YouTube um, within the next couple of days. So be on the lookout for that in case you wanna go back and rewatch it if you missed anything. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today on a Saturday. I hope you feel inspired to make your own UV resin creations. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye.